I am Greeny. Today we're taking a look at the Opspot Tail Air and the basic controls using the Opspot Start app. As soon as the Opspot app is installed on your device, you can open the Opspot app. In case your camera isn't automatically found, you can simply swipe to the left and you click the rescan app. It should take a few seconds before your camera will be found. In order to connect your app to your camera, you can choose between two different connection modes. We can either use Wi-Fi in which we connect our camera to our local Wi-Fi here, or we use our phone's cellular service to live stream, which means the camera itself will create a Wi-Fi network to which we can join our phone. In my case, I'm going to use mobile data, so I change the tab and then I simply hit the button. Once the phone has connected, we get our preview image and the basic layout. At the left, we have our tabs, which will lead to settings. And at the bottom, we always have context depending buttons, which will allow us to change certain aspects of the camera, depending on in which tab we currently are. At the top right, we get a preview window, which we can move to any point on our screen. And lastly, on the left right corner, we have the start record or start stream button, which we will use if we want to go live. The camera control, which you will be probably using the most, is the camera control for moving the camera. And the the easiest way to control the camera is to press somewhere on the screen until we get some feedback and then move our finger in the direction which we want to move the camera. That's the easiest way to control the camera, but not the most precise. If you need more precise movement controls, we click this button here, which will bring up a basic on-screen joystick. With the slider over here, we have the ability to set how fast the camera will be moving. And with the on-screen joystick, we can now move in the direction we want at the fixed set speed. On the right, we also get zoom control, so we can zoom into the image, by the way, as you might have seen when I zoomed in, our view has not changed. However, our preview has, and that is why there is a separate preview so you can see what your stream is seeing while also having the overview to see what's all around. Once we have pointed the camera into the direction of interest, we can go ahead and fine tune the framing. And to do this, we simply press onto the crop icon. Right now, my head is cut off by the framing, but we can simply fix this by using our hands and just moving our frame to where we want it to be. And as you see, there's even an animation which will guarantee that the adjustments are smooth and not instant. In this view, we can also change the size of the crop and for example, zoom out. And to do this, we simply pinch to zoom and select our new framing. Then the camera will move to the new framing and that's all there is to do there. If you ever cropped in and you want to jump out to the full frame, there's a button for that. You can simply press this button to jump between the full frame and the crop without the animation. And if you're not a fan of pinch to zoom, we can use this slider to define our crop. If you ever find yourself in a situation that the camera is pointing towards something you don't want it to point to, you can simply bring it back to its homing position by pressing this button. This button will recenter the camera and bring it back to its homing position. Speaking of positioning the camera, we can set up to three predefined positions for the camera. Let's select this view here as our first position. To do this, we click onto the P with the plus sign. Now we have created our first position. Now we can move our camera to a different position. And now we can add another position. And lastly, let's do a third position, which is all the way up here and create the third position. If we want to quickly recall those positions, we can simply click onto the positions and the camera will move to those predefined positions. Those positions, of course, can also include crop. So let's say we want to crop into my face here. So let's frame to my face. Let's say that's the framing we want. And now we want to update our first position. To do this, we simply do a long press on position one until we get the context menu. And then we say update. And if we now move to a second position and go back to the first position, we now also change the crop. Of course, if we want to delete the position, it's as simple as doing a long press and saying delete. One more basic camera setting which might become handy is focus. So if you see that something on your screen is not in focus that you want to be in focus, we can simply press on the thing we want to have in focus and the camera will use its autofocus and focus on this thing. 
If you ever want to change the behavior of your focus from autofocus to manual focus, we can do this by going into the camera settings tab. Most of the settings in here we will not discuss in this video. There will be a video for the more advanced settings of the Opspot Tail Air, which will be linked somewhere in this video. But if we want to change our autofocus to manual focus, we can do this by pressing onto this button, the AFC, which is autofocus continuous, and we can change it to autofocus single, or manual focus. If you have set it to manual focus, you get this new setting over here, which is the F. And if you press that, you will get a focus wheel, which allows you to manually set the focus of the camera. I assume that most of you will be using either autofocus single or autofocus continuous. The difference between the two, autofocus continuous, the camera is constantly autofocusing on the thing it thinks should be focused on. And with autofocus single, you press on what you want to focus, the focus is set once and the focus will stay and it will stay in that focus setting until you press the next time. All right, that's it for the advanced manual camera settings. Let's go back to basic settings like the AI gesture controls. The Opspot Tail Air is an AI powered camera which supports pattern recognition, which means that you can tell the camera to do certain things based on what your hands are doing. If you want to enable or disable those gestures, we can do this by pressing onto those three buttons buttons to get into the tail air menu and then we go to AI and gesture controls. In here we can enable or disable the single gestures and we can also define how much zoom the zoom gesture is doing as well as if we want to flip the direction of the dynamic zoom. Dynamic zoom simply means that when we do this that this means zooming in or if you flip it this means zooming out. My tip to everyone who's starting out with the Opspot Tail Air, get yourself 10 minutes, sit down with the camera and go through all the AI gestures the camera has. Try them, test them, play with it, and then find out how you can use them for your advantage. If you find that those gestures are not worth your time and you don't want to have them and use them, you can still disable them, but understanding how they can help you is actually quite nice. In the same menu in which we just found the AI settings, we find the audio settings. Note here that the Opspot Tail Air is always using the internal microphone unless you tell it not to and plug in a microphone. So even when you tell it not to use the internal microphone, as long as there is no external microphone plugged into the camera, it will be using the internal microphone. If you don't want to have the internal microphone on, even when you don't have a microphone plugged in, we can go into the audio settings and in here, we can simply mute the microphone and now it would not be recording or streaming any audio. Speaking of the mute button, next to the mute button, there is a monitor button. And what that does is it sends the audio from the camera to your smartphone. So you can listen to the audio on your smartphone, which is quite handy if you're not at the location of your camera and you want to listen in if you really get the audio you're looking for. Also, there is a way to adjust the volume of the microphone by this slider at the top. There is also the way to enable or disable automatic gain, which means if your audio is low, it will be boosted so it reaches a certain threshold. And there's also a noise reduction setting, which is handy when shooting outdoors with the camera when there are background noises which you want to remove. By the way, if you enjoy this video and you want to see more content just like this one, hey, why not consider subscribing to Greenbox? All right. With the basic camera positioning, its framing and audio settings tackled, we are ready for recording or go live with the camera. And to do so, we press onto this big red button and hold the press to get into the streaming menu. In here, we have some settings and we will go through them one by one. At the very top, we have media settings, which are the basic media settings for recording and live streaming. And in here at the top, we have the frame rate, we have the encoder, we have the bitrate and the resolution for recordings. Below that, we have advanced settings for the NDI or RTSP streaming, which again is the encoder, bitrate and resolution. And if you're planning to use the Opspot Tail Air, 
as an HDMI camera, at the very bottom, there's also the HDMI output settings. Assuming you have inserted and formatted an SD card into the tail air, we can now start recording by simply hitting the start button at the top right. And by doing so, we get back to our overview screen and we now have an indicator that we're recording to our camera and there is a new button which is on the screen right here, as well as the stop recording button just next to it. And this button can be very useful for you if you're recording longer videos with key moments that you need to quickly find in the future. So if something happens, which is a key moment, you simply press this button and this will set a marker to the video file. If we now stop recording and if we go to our media, we see our recording. And with the recording, we also see the moments in which we press this button. This allows us to either export this as a frame, as an image to our camera roll, or just make it easier to find it later on when we're editing the video. Speaking of downloading the photo, we can, of course, in our media library, click on select, select the video clips we want to download to our camera and simply hit the download button. This will add the video to your phone's camera roll. Of course, you can also delete the files or copy the files to your computer by using the SD card and inserting it to your computer. With media management and recording tackled, let's now talk about how to live stream from the camera without the need for a live streaming computer. To do this, we again press and hold the record button to get into the menu. And next to the recording settings, we have some live streaming options. In fact, there are predefined live streaming presets for some live streaming platforms like YouTube or Twitch. The only thing you need to do if you want to go live on those platforms, you simply hit the login button, enter your login credentials, and you can start streaming to those services from your camera. However, I want to show you how to manually set up a live stream if you're going live using RTMP streaming. To do so, we click onto the RTMP button and as you see, I have already set up two live streams and if you want to set up your own live stream, you simply press the add RTMP destination button and then you will be greeted by this overview. In here, you can define a simple name for the destination so you know which destination is which. Then you can enter your RTMP URL as well as your stream key and those two settings you usually get from the service you want to stream to somewhere in the dashboard or around the live streaming studio. So let's assume I want to go live on Restream. So I select this and now if I would go live, I would go live to Restream. But before we do that, there are two more settings I want to discuss here. At the very top, we now have a resolution setting which allows me to change between Full HD and HD for the live stream as well as we have the bitrate setting which allows us to set the bitrate depending on your internet connection or the limitations of the live streaming service you want to live stream to. For example, on Twitch, you're not allowed to stream with a greater bitrate than 6,000 kilobits per second. So we would set it to 6,000. With that set, there is just one more setting before we can go live and this is full recording. If this setting is enabled, the entire live stream will also be recorded to the SD card in the Upspot tail air. If we don't want to record the live stream and we just want to go live, we can disable the setting and then either press the start button at the very top or go back to our overview. And once you're ready for live streaming, we simply press the live streaming button and we will go live. And once we are live, this will be indicated by this little indicator up here, which tells us that we are streaming to the RTMP destination for about 15 seconds now. Once we're done with live streaming, we hit the timer once and a second time. So we confirm that we want to end the live stream. And when we do this, the live stream will be ended. Once we're done, we can either use the hardware button on the camera to turn the camera off, or we can do it through the app by going into the menu again. And at the very top, there is the power Power off button, we can confirm that we want to power off and the camera will be turning off. This last part of the video is recorded on the Upspot tail air itself, so you get an idea of what the quality is like and how the AI tracking features work in a desk setup as I have it right here. I hope this video helped you, giving you an overview of the Upspot Start app for your Upspot Tail Air. And in case it did, please let me know by writing a comment down in the comment section so I know that the work I'm doing is actually helping people. If you want to learn more 
about the app itself, there is another video on my channel about the more advanced settings and the general settings. The reason why I split this into multiple videos is because the Opspot Tail Air and its app has so many features, so many functions that it would be almost impossible to cramp everything into one video which wouldn't go somewhere towards an hour of runtime. And we all know that this is a very long video already and not everyone is into long videos on YouTube. So thanks for watching. Again, if this helped, let me know. I am Greeny, this is Greenbox and I will see you hopefully in another video about the Upspot tail air on my channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you later. And in case I haven't uploaded that video yet, watch one of the videos here on the end card. I think the end card is over here. Yeah, do that here. Thanks. Bye.